So the story of the beekeeper is Jason Statham plays a retired beekeeper who has taken up the hobby of beekeeping in his retirement. Now, what is a beekeeper? A beekeeper is somebody that comes in and fixes things when things are broken. So if something isn't working in society or our systems, you have this mysterious organization that can come in and right wrongs. So in setting up the movie, I really wanted to open up Jason to the audience in a way we haven't seen it before. So he actually learned how to keep bees, how to harvest honey, how to open up the hives and, and work with the bees themselves. And what you see on screen is real. And it really kind of grounds him and, and helps add to the mystique of him as this mysterious force of nature that ultimately becomes a force for justice. So in The Beekeeper, Jason represents this clandestine secret organization. And we open up a door and just a crack and we, we get to peer through and you realize, you know, maybe they've been around a really long time and maybe they've been helping us in keeping civilizations on the right track for a long time. And it's interesting because as you move through the film and, and the lore of the beekeeper is told through the reactions of different people, you, you, you see how powerful the organization is, how respected it is, and how much reach it has into the absolute top levels of government and society. So when the movie opens, make sure you don't miss the credit sequence up front because it actually tells a rather interesting story about beekeeping, beekeepers, and the mythology of their place in societies throughout time. And as the movie unfolds, you, you learn a lot about the beekeepers from people in the government, from people who are very powerful in society. And you have to wonder, how do the beekeepers earn that reputation? But Jason jo does a very good job of showing us how. I have to admit, I was a little bit intimidated working with Jason at first because he's so iconic. He's such a um, the stoic, powerful character. Uh, he, he really is a brand unto himself. And as a director and as someone who's directed action, you know, I always bring my A game to the table, but Jason taught me that there's an A-plus game. And when you have somebody who does their own stunts, you don't have to play any camera tricks to hide that. You're not shooting a double and then stuffing shots in of somebody's face. It's, it's seamless, and it really grounds the action, and it really grounds the choreography and adds a reality that, you know, I'm kind of spoiled now, I think, for working with anyone else. So I, I've been really fortunate in my career. You know, I've worked with Jake Gyllenhaal, Brad Pitt, Will Smith, um, just a lot of great guys, a lot of amazing actors, uh, Christian Bale. Uh, and they're all very different, and they're all rightful movie stars. And there's something magic about a movie star. In working with Jason, I learned that this is a guy who does everything himself, who knows stunts, who knows action, who knows choreography, has an encyclopedic knowledge of any punch ever thrown in cinema, it seems like. And to have a collaborator like that, and then actually to be able to connect with him and bond with him. I mean, he's a great guy, off duty. He's just kind of a funny, quiet, chill person. And you get him on camera and he's just, an action icon it's it's he's a living legend and it was just a lot of fun to work with him and i can't wait to do it again so there's there's a lot of action in this movie a lot of action and the challenge when you have that much action is not being repetitive and and having places to go with it and keeping it interesting and 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 fresh for the audience. One of the funnest scenes is, is the truck stop scene where Anaset shows up with her very large gun and lights the place up. Now, it plays great. It didn't feel so great to make it. I was kind of behind the gun on time. I didn't have the prep I wanted. You know, we were just starting out. It was our first action sequence, so we were kind of learning the grammar of the movie as you do. But once I saw that cut together, I, was beyond happy, I was over the moon, and I knew we were gonna have a special movie at that point. And then it just became about working with Jason, working with Jeremy Marinas, the, the stunt choreographer, um, and building more and more exciting sequences. Another great sequence is um, the SWAT fight outside of Nine Star, where Jason just kind of shows up, feels like this regular guy, and takes down an entire FBI SWAT team himself. And th there's a lot of multiple camera work in there, but there's 
a lot of long takes, and it is because of Jason's ability to do these stunts himself that makes it feel so grounded and real. I mean, you really feel like this guy can take on a SWAT team. And I, I will say after that scene and we shot it, I was you know, a little more cautious around Jason and try to keep on his good side. And then we have, um, you know, one of the earliest scenes in the movie, uh, earliest action scenes is it takes place in a barn and it's actually where, you know, Adam Clay, Jason's character lives. And some bad guys who are really more street thugs make the mistake of uh, challenging him in, in his home space. And he makes a very creative use of the things in the environment to take them out. Uh, and it doesn't end well for those guys. And I think we like that happening because they actually kind of take out his beehives, which is not cool. So they do have to pay for that. And, and one of the more interesting and funner scenes to shoot was um, you know, the bad guys, part of their scamming world is this place called Nine Star, which is kind of the, the, the mother hive of the scammers. And Jason goes in there and is being protected by this incredibly capable paramilitary force. And these guys are scary. I mean, they have all this kit on and they have the latest weapons and training and everything. And he does a pretty good job of um, showing them why a beekeeper is to be reckoned with. So part of the fun of, um, of filmmaking, you know, I, I think the best part of it is casting, and that's what I really love is working with actors. And combining you know, very different actors on camera can get you some amazing results. It's like you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The magic comes from gifted actors doing amazing things. So Josh Hutcherson plays Derek Danforth, who is I'm just going to say it, kind of a dumpster fire of a human being. He's, he's a bad guy we love to hate, and, but he's a person, and he comes from a childhood that maybe wasn't so great, and he didn't get the love he needed, and, you know, he, he sort of is acting out, in a sense, to find his own way and navigate through the world, which doesn't justify what it does, but... As I like to say, everyone's the hero of his own movie, and Derek definitely thinks he's the hero of this movie until he's told otherwise by Jason. And Josh built this amazing character, and we worked together and collaborated to have this kind of larger-than-life character who at the same time is very grounded and does come from an honest place. And then you pair him up with a powerhouse, classic traditional actor like Jeremy Irons, and you have this, this clash as Jeremy is trying to wrangle and, and, and herd cats with this wild kid with no boundaries and no empathy. And it's like cleaning up after an elephant or a tornado. And, and you can see Jeremy playing that dilemma of what have I gotten myself into and how do I get myself out? When I when I first read the script, uh, I was really excited, uh, primarily to play Derek because he is just uh, unhinged wild man, and I think for me getting the chance to do something outside of my comfort zone was very exciting. Um, and the story in general is just like a classic, hardcore, chaotic uh, revenge tale, and and you know who better to do that than Jason Statham? <laughs> like that's the guy you want to see, you know, hunt people down and and uh, seek revenge. He goes about it in a very violent way, uh, not how I would personally handle the situation, but uh, it's very entertaining and, and very, very fun to watch. Derek's a wild man. I mean, he's 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 so out there. You know, I think that when I first started talking with David about uh, bringing Derek to life, we wanted to find a way to find the truth and find a way for me to empathize with him as as an actor playing this character because he's so bad. He does a lot of really bad things that uh, that it's you don't just want to be a bad guy without reason. So I think trying to build that out and understand that it comes from his upbringing, his insecurities, his addictions, whether it's to money, power, or substances, and uh, and kind of take it from there. And it was uh, it was a roller coaster. It was it was it was, it was really fun to embody. I was ha happy to finish because I. Didn't like how comfortable I felt <laughs> being that guy. Um, but you know, I think all of us have a piece of Derek in us. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy Irons is an absolute legend and an actor with such weight and prowess and power behind his voice, his everything. Um, and my character gets to treat him like garbage the entire time uh, and be a total punk to him, which uh, was a lot of fun. Um, and David gave me a lot of, you know, uh, latitude to, to improv and, and bring stuff out of nowhere. 
And so I got to throw extra insults at him, and uh, he took it like a champ. And, but he's, he's a dream to work with, and, and, uh, and the, the dynamic between him and Derek is very fun because, you know, uh, West Wild comes from the CIA. He's a very, like, buttoned-up guy, and he's kind of been handed this job to take care of my character, Derek, and make sure he doesn't get in too much trouble. And that's a very hard job to do because... Derek's job kind of is just getting in trouble and causing problems and dramas and this kid should have been arrested I don't even know how many times so uh so it's a fun fun dynamic for sure you know it's the B puns are great there are many of them um I don't know which one is my favorite I just I I'm like trying to stop myself in these interviews from just using B puns continually because it would just be too much um but I think that I think it's fun for the audience to have such an odd, it's such a weird thing to have like surrounding this movie that's very serious and intense and violent, and then all of a sudden he's a beekeeper and it's like protecting the hive and he has to go outside of the rules of the law to make sure the hive maintains its 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 health and it's really weird. It's a very weird choice, but I love it and I think audiences will get a nice tickle out of it while along this uh, chaotic, violent movie. So yeah, so Clay is a, uh, he's an actual beekeeper. He keeps bees, and I think we all understand what that is. But the double entendre of that is that the beekeeper is also a, uh, a, a group of these people that operate outside of government institutions and private corporations. And when things start to go wrong in the world or something is done that's not right, they are there to then go and find some kind of moral justice for the situation. Um, I don't know how many there are. I'm hoping there's just the one because uh, they're pretty gnarly. You don't want to mess with them. Jason's amazing. I mean, the guy is like, nobody does it like him. He's, he's such a pro. <clears throat> he's, he doesn't miss. Like, he, he doesn't miss a punch. He doesn't miss a shot. He doesn't miss a step. The guy is just like a perfectly oiled machine. Um, and he's really intense and intimidating on screen, but off screen, he's really nice. And, uh, and my character, Derek, I don't have many scenes. I have one scene with him in the entire movie because we're really at your adversaries, but from a distance and, and whatnot. But, uh, but he was great to work with, and the crew loved him. And he just, uh, he's, he's kicks ass, man. He's the best. Yeah, so the Danforth compound, at this point, Derek is finally starting to grasp the gravity of the situation that Clay is on the way there. All hell is about to break loose, and, and it seems like the walls are finally going to cave in on him. He's on a drug-fueled bender. His mom is, like, helpless and has no idea what to do with him. And uh, ultimately, it leads to a, a violent conclusion. Yeah, I think something that David Ayer always does with his movies, especially when he does, like, the bigger action films, is he he doesn't just put all of his focus and energy and attention on, you know, making cool shots and finding great action sequences. He does those flawlessly and they're incredible. But then on top of that, he really cares about finding a, a narrative storyline that is interesting, that's relatable, and then filling that and, and populating that story with dynamic three-dimensional characters. And, you know, with my character Derek, for example, we had a lot of conversations talking about what his psyche is, how he arrived to this stage, how he justifies his actions. Um, and so, you know, to watch a director juggle both of those things and you have an end product like The Beekeeper, I think it's uh, it's very, very cool to be a part of. The Beekeeper is like a badass chaotic revenge movie with a lot of bee puns. Uh, it's really exciting. Um, it, it's a story of revenge and, uh, and you know, going to extremes to try to, to serve justice. Um, also talking about, you know, corruption and and what power can can do to people and in my character specifically you have a guy who's completely unhinged and, and absolutely out of touch with reality and and has dehumanized these victims and uh and that's he's gonna he's gonna get what's coming for him thanks for watching make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released